Trans Jamaica Highway, what is it, right? It's the, and they like to use the word, the concessionaire of the Highway 2000. So if you're Jamaican, you should know Highway 2000. It's that South Coast um, Highway. It's Jamaica's first toll road, right? Way back in, I think, 01 or so on. And probably oh, wow. the largest infrastructure project in the English-speaking Caribbean at that time. So if you're going to the, the toll booth, are you giving them money or giving Trans Jamaica money? Um, so that's their primary revenue. Hi guys, and welcome to Tickers, the series on the Limitless podcast where we review listed companies on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. I'm Theon. And I'm Matthew. And today we'll be talking about Trans Jamaica Highway, ticker as TJH, all right? But before we get into it, I'd love if you guys could just leave a like, subscribe to this video. We have a goal. We're trying to get to a thousand subs, all right, by New Year, by the end of this year. So, mm -hmm. you know, with you guys, everyone's support and so on, just tell a friend about the channel. If you think that they would be interested in investing, I think this is a really cool video, especially for um, a lot of the earlier investors who have invested in this stock or who are even looking at this stock and say, Yo, why is this stock climbing so high? Tell us, why is this stock flying? <laughs> so if you guys like that kind of stuff and so on, just hit subscribe. We'd appreciate it. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah. Let's let's get into the episode. I think it's a very simple business model. Uh, that's mm -hmm. also kind of why I like it. So <laughs> this episode should be pretty short, right? Like 10 minutes. And we just... <laughs> <laughs> Have we ever done a 10 minute? Or a, what's the shortest podcast episode we've ever done? I don't know. I can't uh, recall, but it, it, I feel like it's... Has it even been half an hour? Have maybe we done half some? an hour? Maybe. maybe. Maybe half an hour, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, maybe. guys, if we talk too much. You guys don't like hearing our voices, just let us know. But uh, <laughs> I think I'll just be sharing my screen right now. Trans Jamaica Highway, what is it, right? It's the, and they like to use the word, the concessionaire of the Highway 2000. So if you're Jamaican, you should know Highway 2000. It's that South Coast um, Highway, you know, East West. Uh, it's Jamaica's first toll road, right? Way back in, I think, 01 or so on. And probably oh, wow. the largest infrastructure project in the english-speaking caribbean at that time all right and yeah they um i think nrock started i'm going to talk about nrock but you know um basically what trans jamaica highway does is they do a lot of toll collections so if anybody has ever traversed that highway right that's their main that's the main way they make money Right, it's toll collection. So if you're going to the, the toll booth, are you giving them money or giving Trans Jamaica money? Um, so that's their primary revenue. And, you know, the rates, they're dependent on the vehicles themselves. So I don't know, if, can I full screen with this? Yes, mm -hmm. beautiful. So it is dependent on the type of vehicle. So I took this, this screenshot from their website, actually. And it shows what it looks like in terms of what the fees look like whether you're class one class two or class three and the class one versus class two or class three is just the, the height of the vehicle and length as well um so it depends on the category you fit in and then if you have a t tag or not t tag um is a sticker right that you place on your car and there's a reader at the toll booth and basically, it just allows you to do transactions. That's really it. it. Just allows you to do transactions, and you don't have to pull out cash or anything. It's automated. So you go up to the toll booth with the car. Once your T tag is on it, it will scan the T tag. You know, realize you know you are you. Uh, deduct money from your um, deduct money mm -hmm. basically, and you're allowed to drive. Um, and you just pass through with ease. It automatically opens. You don't have to speak to anyone or so on. And then without T tag, you know, of course, these are the fees, and it it's is a separate cheaper. lane. It's a separate lane. So it's T, a separate lane. T tag yeah. lanes. 
So you can have T tag lanes. Some I've seen almost like hybrid where you can, if you have a tag, you can go through, or if you pay, you can go through to it. I think they're trying to be able to do that, but sometimes um, it's just its own, most times or almost all the time, it's just its own lane, which is kind of cool because there's never traffic at a T tag lane. You just get there and you just drive straight through mm. after, right? You don't crash into it like LA Lewis. But uh, <laughs> I don't know if you ever saw that where L.A. Lewis mm -hmm. crashed into the tour booth. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. And that's really it by the tour plaza. It's actually cheaper. So if you look on it, with the T-Tag, it's $650 at Vineyard. So mm -hmm. there are four, I should say there are four um, basically toll gates. Uh, there's Portmore, Spanish Town, Vineyards, and Maypen. And there will be a fifth one there is a fifth one uh and we will speak about that later but these are the four toll booths that are in operation currently and mm -hmm. yeah these are the prices so you can see a decent little discount still 650 versus 730 that adds up that? that's 80 dollars cheaper with a t-tag and that adds up over time because imagine if you're doing back and forth per day every day that's 160 yeah. a day I can't do math, but that's a decent amount if you're doing that every week and every month. So that does add up. And just the convenience of the T-Tag itself, which I'll go into soon. Mm. So it's about a 10% or so discount. T yeah, less. More, sorry, more than 10% for this one at least. All right, $80 at $650. Yeah, definitely yeah. more than 10%. Uh, but that's the, that's the primary way in which they make money. So when you think about it, it's really like a cash business. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, the toll rates are determined, as I said, based on the vehicle class and the agreement under the concession. So they signed a concession agreement, and we'll go into that soon as well. Uh, and then the app. I think the app is a cool, one of the coolest parts about um, Trans Jamaica Highway. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the app is nice. And I just sc shared a screenshot of my app. My balance is this because I changed credit cards and it deducted and then oh, realized. Oh, this is actually your... Yeah, this oh. is my, my own. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I have no money in it, basically. Um, mm -hmm. But I just I just paid it. So you say auto top up. So auto top up is such a cool feature because once it gets be below a, a certain threshold, it automatically mm -hmm. will take that money from your credit card. So you can set that up. So I set that up already. You can top up immediately oh. if you want. So what did you what, what did you set yours to then? So it'll top up five grand if it's below one thousand five hundred. Yeah. Oh. That's that's all. That's okay. how my top up feature works. So if you hold on, so if you didn't top it up, mm -hmm. and then you went to the oh, and you went to the you tried to go through the T tag lane, it would just reject you. It couldn't like yeah, it, it, it would tell you when it couldn't charge you. Mm -mm. When it happens, you'd have to tell it from before. Yeah. But, but I guess you could then just charge it while you're in the line. Like, how fast does it go through? It's like, it you can, can take just up press to an hour to oh. actually reflect. Oh, wow. Yeah, they actually tell you that too. Oh. It never okay. takes an hour no, for me, but because mm -hmm. I've done from one tour booth to the next. And one tour booth mm -hmm. to the next is like, what, 20 minutes? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's also it's supposed that, to be 20 minutes. Yeah, it's supposed to be 20 minutes. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be 20 minutes with speed loads. Okay. I hope. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> Around 20. Okay. Approximately. Yes, let's use that word. Approximately mm. 20 minutes. Plus or minus. I wonder why they can't improve on that, though. Well, I guess that they probably have plans for that. Because then, suppose you were, you realize if you go there mm -hmm. and you're supposed to go through the T tag lane and say if you didn't have the auto top up or whatever, you have the money on the card. And maybe you don't even have enough. I, I mean, I guess you'd go on, but then sometimes maybe not everyone goes with as much cash. Mm -hmm. um, the way I think of it is almost like, well, this is an account. This is like your account balance. So if you mm -hmm. don't top it up, you can't really use mm -hmm. it. So it's not like it's taken from, it's not like the scanning is done from your card. The scanning is done from the T-Tag and the T-Tag gets it from the card. So if you don't allow the T-Tag to get that access, and to, to get mm -hmm. the funds from your car, then it won't really happen. Mm -hmm. But it's cool because mm -hmm. I say Amber Innovations here too. I say Amber, um, these guys are doing mm -hmm. a lot still. Yeah. yeah. I, didn't and I think they do, someone I know, their car, I think it's, their car has some sort of thing with it. Like they have an app, it kind of has maybe similarish design to this. Mm -hmm. And you can like, 
you can auto shut off your car and stuff like that. You can get notifications when your car turns on. Oh yeah, I have that. Um, oh yeah, okay. But yeah. I think that's that's Ambo too, right? Yeah, it is. It, yeah, they were powered by Ambo, I guess. So uh, I think they changed it so, too. You know, wait, so why didn't your yeah. why didn't your auto top up kick auto top I changed credit kicking. cards. Oh, see, I haven't put the new card on. Yeah, I just put the new card on right before this. <laughs> this actually, oh, this so it wouldn't go in. It wouldn't go through. It did. It did. It's less than fifteen hundred. Yeah, it is. So it, it it went through. I can see it reflected now. This is just a screenshot. But oh, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, this okay. is just a screenshot. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it's it's just so I like how easy it is. Well, not for them to get my money, but just people in general. Because for the company, mm. that just means. It's just it, mm -hmm. to me. It's just it from you decrease the amount of steps that you need mm. to take to get. Yeah, much yeah, easier to do it. Much it's easier. Like much Amazon, more efficient. Yeah, you know, like Amazon has is working on um, that they have this thing like one click, like you can just click on something and buy it. Yeah, without you know, like sometimes there's like a barrier where you have to check old, out. address and yeah. So if you like set an auto address, I haven't used it yet. I don't want to have something like that where I just Same. have that and just bam, buy, 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 like. <laughs> they're not Same. getting me, yo. Yeah, they're not, <laughs> they're not getting, getting me. me. Uh, wait, another question I have. This is this is the app or the this is more like a website you're showing. Yeah, me. this is from the this web. This is like your iPad or mm -mm. this is or from the website. Have an app? This is an app on a. Is on it like a separate phone. app on a phone, or yeah. is it like you have to go to the website? No, it's an app on the phone. There's an app. Okay, There's definitely okay. an app on your phone. Ooh, yeah, man. Cool. Okay, nice, yeah. nice, nice. And I think I honestly okay. believe everybody should get T tags because. But well, if you if you do it, if you drive there, if you drive there fairly often, yeah, and if, even mm -hmm. if you don't drive there fairly often, if you have to sit in, a, I, I I used to sit in those lines. Those lines can mm -hmm. take a while still. Whereas mm -hmm. if it's a day when something is like an event is happening on the south coast, and you see a lot mm -hmm. of people by that toll booth, like mm -hmm. all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not gonna put this on the podcast. But um, yeah, definitely should not talk about this. But um, let's just say if you let's say you know you and a man are driving under under on, on the highway, right? Mm -hmm. And you see him rushing, right? And him fly past you. Let's say he's going at maybe like one sixty and fly past you, one forty and fly past you, right? It's just mm -hmm. so funny to see them wait in the line. When if you had a T tag, mm -hmm. if you were really rushing, you'd get a T tag, you know. Like mm -hmm. if you're truly in a rush or so. Just... So you've so you've never seen a T tag line long. I've never seen a line. I've seen a line at the T tag before, and that's when people decline still. Like they don't have money on their account, and they oh. have to reverse, and everybody else have to reverse and get them out, and so yeah, mm -hmm. that's the only time. Otherwise, there's never a line. Because mm. from you drive up there, you know, it's so just quick. Instantly. I don't it's even like have to, yeah, I don't even have to stop my vehicle. You can put it at a roll and it mm -hmm. it opens the gate and you just fly mm. through. Okay. It's very, very quick. So even if you go one someone, one separate, so you should get a T tag. The time mm. I got my T tag though, there was no, you have to pay. there was no charge at that time. Oh, but you're saying no. No, I think you have to there's pay. An, a, there's an initial. Yes. I believe so. But oh, so you can do it online. Uh, here is my thing with Transjam. And if anybody from the company is looking at this, is, is, oh, is, gosh, is watching this. Oh, gosh, don't tell me I have to go in person. Pro. <laughs> my biggest no. issue is that this is not widely accessible, right? I don't know if it if you can do it online or but not. I guess you I'm have not to get sure. the tag. But I guess it... Yeah, mm. but still, there Maybe. are places where... I think even in the you US, can up, you can get your tag at like supermarkets and so on. Like it's not hard mm. with gas stations and so on. It's not hard for certain entities. So I don't know mm. why it's so hard. I don't know if it's because, you know, financial stuff and financial Wait, stuff. How long, did it, hard. how long did it take? Do you remember like how long it took you? Is it like a uh, bank thing minutes. where it's like you have to set aside? The, oh, okay. It's not like mm -hmm. you have to set aside the whole day and wait in a mm -hmm. super long night. Okay. At least. I, okay. Yeah. I stopped at the toll nice booth. Record. I went to the the office mm. and then i just gave them cash and then they gave me uh, yeah, i'm kind of interesting though because I'm, I'm even thinking like what you're saying what if they were to like set up say there's like uh i don't know like a i'm thinking of like a heavily trafficked area mm -hmm. that they're the type the typical customers because you said their most popular tool is like the one between kingston to portmore right 
that is yeah that is the most popular that's like one. the most popular one so yeah. i'm trying to think okay i didn't say that but that yeah. more people <laughs> but yeah you're is right. it that more people are going from kingston to portmore or do you think more people are going from portmore to kingston uh does it matter it's kind of the same no no i'm just trying to think of i don't know because it's don't the know. same I'm, it's I'm the saying. same toll booth whether you're going no, or i'm just coming. trying to think where is it that most of the users are people who live in portmore or more of the users are people who live in kingston i'd guess portmore right i would assume portmore coming so to then i'm kingston. thinking okay then to go try to find a heavily trafficked area or heavily trafficked areas in portmore and then, like, suppose you were to, like, set up a booth where you're like, hey, you can get your tea tag in this amount of minutes. Because doesn't it help save Transjam money, too? Because then they don't have to actually handle um, the cash. And then there's, like, a cost to handling cash. Okay. And then also even amount of workers. So I'm saying, yo, what if they were to set up something like, say, for example, Price Mart? Mm -hmm. I don't know how popular the port more in Price Mart is. Supposed to have, like, a little booth there that says, yo... Do the five minutes you can get your tea tag and you get a little discount or something like that. And I mean, then Transjam would, saves money. It Imagine would, it would right save now, a lot. How many like on the Portmore toll, how many booths is it? Is it like four? I'm trying to I'm trying to remember. Uh, or, it's quite including a bit, it's way more than it's more than four. Oh. It's definitely more Eight, than six. Four. I don't know. But say it's I six, hardly but go it, that way. Okay, but the, the, it's only one tea tag lane, right? I'm not sure. Or it's two. I'm but, not. But, I think it's the two. majority. The majority is non T tag. Definitely. So say it's eight, and then two is T tag. So that means those six have to have people there handling the cash. Uh, yes. And then when those people have the cash, you then have to have like armored truck or have a way of I don't know how they get the cash, but you have to get that cash deposited to the bank, and there's costs associated with that. You actually have to transport the cash. You have to pack it up, and you know you have all to of pay that. Pay the stuff. workers too. Yeah. Yeah, that operate that I, booth. If they could then if they could then transition that and have it that you know most of the say the majority is T tag because you can get us get so much more people on the T tag and then you can pay like less people mm -hmm. um having to use cash or even a point where the minority is cash, almost like now where the minority is T tag, the minority is cash. They could like save a lot of costs there. That's what I was just thinking. It is true. But then would the discount still be as drastic? I don't know. That's the only thing for T tag people. To me, it doesn't really matter, but to the company, I guess it makes way more sense. I just wish they were more aggressive in that retail to retail the the T tag. Like mm. I just I just wish that was a thing because productivity is lost. There are lots of people that may not really. It it's mm. just the barrier to entry is so much harder. When you have to, I mean, yeah, the thing is that like, does everybody know? Like you told me, it took you five minutes to get your T tag, but mm -hmm. like how many people know that? Exactly. Because, you know, the, the typical thing is like, yo, if it's something, you got to go sit in a bank and you got to mm -hmm. go do that. And you do probably that, need like, like JP for signing this and that. You <laughs> may not, yeah, you may not know. So yeah. it's like, if you knew, I don't know. I feel like they could probably even push hard on like social media. Maybe like I, do some Instagram ads I or agree. Twitter ads or something. I 100% agree. That's why I had to pause mm. and say, listen, if anyone from that company is watching, you know, if mm. CEO... Uh, Mr. Anderson, I think his first name is Ivan. Mr. Anderson is watching. Please make this widely accessible, especially in the retail mm -hmm. space. Um, but yeah, so that's 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 T tag. Uh, that's as much as I say on 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 the my T tag app. Uh, also, you know they also get money from secondary developments. So activities just related to developments within the highways proximity around that space you know mm. like leasing space for like telecommunication cables so if digital or flow wanted to run certain things fiber optics partnerships with you mm. know like those people uh they can earn commissions from even gas stations uh near the mm. highway and so on so there's like a total gas station i think by old harbor there's supposed to be a second gas station being set up i think arubis <clears throat> as well so you know, they can earn from the developments around the highway, um, you know, exploring even housing developments, real est retail establishments, you know, other facilities to support the highway users. They can get like lease income. Um, so, yeah. And mm -hmm. oh, this was just a Gleena article from their IPO. 
So Transjam, why it's such a big company is this is the most money um, in terms of an IPO that a, a company has raised. I really, yeah, on the market. Oh. Yeah, it's the How largest. It? It's the largest IPO. I think it was fourteen billion. I oh, want to 14. open. Hold on, let me. Yeah, See, this was six billion. Six yeah. billion. Yeah. Oh, damn. I think they even up. Yeah, they wanted to raise fourteen billion. I think they they upsized to. So I remember it was. I need to find something right after. Yeah, upsizing it to ten billion units at one dollar forty. Yeah, fourteen billion. <laughs> um that they raised and yeah enrock was the company that held 100 percent of the shares before um that's mm. national road oh, bro hold on one second i'm gonna find enrock give me a second operating company or something yeah National Road Operating and Construction Company. Nice. So they both operate and build the roads. Yeah. Yeah. And then Transjam basically just manages it. Um, so, yeah. Mm. Going back to the presentation, though. So NRAC is government. NRAC is government, yes. NRAC is government. So we should talk about JIO, right? JIO is actually Jamaica Infrastructure Operator Limited. So JIO itself, they are the operators of the toll booths of the, the highway itself. So um, it was, I'm trying to pronounce these. It's a joint venture right, between Vinci Construction and I, I don't even want to try and butcher the name. It's French. So this is Boug, I don't know, Bougo. I don't, I, I'm not going to try and butcher the name, but you know, they, you know, dealt with operations and maintenance of the highway, the tasks of day-to-day -day operations, you know, upkeep of the road, ensuring its safety, efficiency, that kind of stuff. So they had a, they have a lot of employees compared to Transjam. I remember seeing Transjam had like nine and they had um, a few scores of employees and so on. Uh, they deal with like toll collection. So they're the company that manages the toll collection. Um, you know, both the manual and electronic and all of that kind of stuff. They have patrolling, securities. I don't know if you've ever seen, like, the um, vehicles on the side of the road mm -hmm. that are driving. It's almost like a, they're usually minibus, and I think they're usually minibuses, and I think it says patrol on it. Um, mm -hmm. They're the ones that oversee regular patrolling, ensuring it's safe and so on, and dealing mm -hmm. with surveillance and so on. So mm -hmm. JIO, uh, it I mention it here simply because uh, you know they have a contractual agreement um, with you know Trans Jamaica Highway, but Trans Jamaica Highway actually used to pay them a specific amount, and then they said, you know, to cut our expenses, why not just own the company that operates? the you know the the toll a lot of the toll stuff so they actually bought 51 percent of jio i went for that controlling stake um uh, of jio with a call option to increase that to 100 percent i think by the end of this year um so you could actually see that their expenses have drastically decreased and we can go over that um and so on but their expenses have decreased since that acquisition like tremendous tremendous decrease i think it was like they slashed the expenses by half or something like that um the operating expenses so jio was just very crucial to mention right here within the ecosystem too of course there's another highway jamaica north south highway company and they operate the i think the edward siaga highway or the north south highway but there's also jamaica mm. railway system i was thinking of too now, Jamaica railway system uh, is not something that I think we should necessarily focus on, but just in the back of our minds. Uh, if you think of competition for the highway, it's hard to find competition for the highway. The only, so when you think about how the highway makes money, all right, 
it's everybody, every vehicle that passes through that highway, they earn from it. Mm. So the only way they would get, I guess, quote unquote competition or things you have to watch out for is if less vehicles are on that, on that road. And on one of the ways less vehicles were on that road previously was COVID, right? So people, you know, no movement days, you know, a lot of restrictions, those kind of things. But if you have an alternate pathway, like a railway system, right? Um, then that alternate pathway would bypass those toll booths. So if certain flags come up and then you start to see that, oh, you know, Jamaica is going bullish into trains and so on, then you'd start to wonder what that would look like. Into, is the commute going to be less? Um, those kind of things. So there mm-hmm. has, if you look right here, it says the JRC, which is the Jamaica Railway uh, Company. Yeah. Basically, they're actively in dialogue with investors. Um, you know, there's a lot of discussions with like World Bank and so on to build out project the project and revitalize oh, a like real Kingston service. To Spanish Kingston town. to Spanish Town. Yeah. So that would bypass oh. Portmore. Uh, it's important to note that there are several studies underway to assess the demand for a commuter service, which will inform the development of a full-scale project, which will also include adult passengers. This would include a spur line interconnection for passenger and freight rail service between Spanish Town, Downtown, Kingston, and Portmore. In particular, the great, the expected Greater Bernard Lodge development. All right. So that was just something to kind of. The only reason I, I I thought of this and looked at this was uh, there was actually a TikTok on somebody taking the train, and I thought that was so cool. I think it was a hundred and something dollars for the ride. Um, mm. yeah, it Where was, was just, the train from? I can't remember. I need to find a TikTok. It was a it was a girl, um, doing some TikTok because I don't know if the taxes were on strike or something like. I don't remember what it was, but it was pretty mm-hmm. cool just to see that you know it, that stuff still operational, right? Mm-hmm. And if the government actually decides to you know go in on it, yeah, mm-hmm. that would be. That would be competition for Transjam. Um, mm. So that's just something to, to think about within the whole ecosystem. Another thing mm. was if JUTC would expand. Um, mm. And well, I guess it wouldn't be Jamaica Urban Transit Company. It would probably be, you know, urban on a rural or something like that. But if there are now more buses, like, a, like let's say like Knutsford, Right, that can take people from Kingston to wherever on the south coast and bypass. That would decrease the amount of the need to for people to drive on that highway. Um, mm. you know, so that's less toll because instead of maybe twenty cars, you have one bus going on that highway. So that would decrease mm-hmm. the revenue if those kind of um transit. Uh, infrastructure and establishment. Yeah. Or the highways. Yeah, I was just talking about. Yeah. I, I mean, I've never actually driven on the old route. Like going. Never? I've driven on. Bo- wait, I've, I've you... driven on Bogwalk Gorge. Right? Uh-huh. And so on. But I've never driven from Kingston to Ocherios via the old route. Like me driving. Oh. I've been in a driving. car. Okay. No, no, yeah. Oh, okay. Me yeah. driving. Yeah. yeah. I used to yeah. kind of be scared of Mount Russell, though, bro. Yeah, I was saying that with like Mount Russell, I used to I used to be kind of scary because you know, the trucks would go there, and then sometimes you'd be driving, like you could be driving, like, there's you'd be driving one way, the truck is driving the other way, it's like you have to kind of like hug it, like supposed to. There were times where like you're, I may be close to the edge, and I was kind of like scared, you know, and if I used to like that still. <laughs> I mean, it's a scenic route as well. I really love enjoying just watching, just yeah. looking at. Yeah, yeah, but. Boy, yeah. that like I could imagine like if I was mm-hmm. the driver back then, I'd yeah, probably yeah, kind of be like, yo, no, like yeah. this still. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my yeah. favorite part about that route was well, face spent. Night. I used to love stopping by face spent to get like jerk chicken and so on. So yeah, you, you, as a face spent, you don't remember face spent? Oh, <laughs> yo, it's crazy. I think it's I know. crazy how like those things have just been far removed mm. because of the highway. Oh yeah, 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 I remember now. I'm looking it up. I still oh, yeah, love the website. Is chicken. some issue their website? 
Yeah, yeah. wow. Damn, yeah. that's how they just got the killed. Did that. In fact, the same is happening with the South Coast Highway because of Poros. Poros, I used to stop and buy like oranges and, you know, bear fruits and so on. But now the highway bypasses mm-hmm. all of that. So I, I'd never stop there for fruits. Mm-hmm. But I see fruits people move closer to Mandeville mm-hmm. now. Like right before they get in, in like Williams mm-hmm. Street, right before they get onto the highway. But uh, let me continue mm-hmm. sharing my screen. Let's touch on some of their plans. Now, I mentioned, let's start with probably the 1C. So there are different phases, right? You have, uh, and we have the, you know, that the, we have Port Mortal and so on. You have vineyards. Uh, you have, you know, those areas that I showed you, but there's 1C. Now, 1C, 1C is actually the part of the highway that we call the Mandeville Lake. So Mandeville Leg was was built, mm-hmm. but Transjam right now is actually actively negotiating to secure the right to operate mm-hmm. and manage, you know, that phase, phase one C of Highway Two Thousand. Exactly. Or earn money from it. And it, it spans about what twenty twenty eight kilometers. It's from Maypen to Williamsfield, like right outside of Mandeville. And so, mm-hmm. you know, they, they do have mm-hmm. right of first refusal, so they have a contractual right of first refusal. Meaning they just have the opportunity to negotiate and agree to, you know, operate it before the government considers any other operators. Because as we say, it's the government bill it, and then they basically will give it to Transjam to operate and so on, right? And of course, you know, they have... Mm-hmm. Kind of gov- yeah, one of the things that just means, yeah, well, you probably talk about it later, but the government through NROC is, a, is the largest mm-hmm. shareholder in Transjam. So it's like them selling it to them. Exactly. They still benefit Trans-Jam, from that because Transam will pay them dividends and stock and I mean, price the appreciation. The government invested the assets in the first place. Like from the IPO days, the government fully mm-hmm. owned. They own a hundred percent of Transjam before, and then they sold eighty. And then because mm-hmm. I think they upsized, they had to create additional mm-hmm. shares for you know people to own. So NROC now owns just about twenty mm. percent, and NROC is the government entity. But mm-hmm. yeah, they they they. Mm-hmm. You bet that they, that that won't always. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember or if you're gonna touch on it. There was this article earlier this year. Um, I will send it in the chat here, oh. and you can probably share it about where like Nigel was talking about. Now, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Nigel. You sound Clark, like you go fishing the, with the bridging. Or on, is it honorable? <laughs> I don't even know. Like, <laughs> he, the previous. No, you can share. I was saying. Oh, yeah. Oh, in the Riverside chat. Side chat. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he was showing, you can probably pull it up. Like, I remember is that the, the government owns different stakes, equity stakes in different companies. And then they're saying, okay, we're going to form a company. And then that company, the different stakes that they own in the different companies, like the Transjam stake, which is a 20%, like you mentioned, through NROC. I think JPS, I don't remember how much. Oh, yeah, at the bottom, 19%. uh, JPS, 19%. So that company would own, is there, you know, see it in the... 19%, sorry. Hold on. Scroll up. Yeah. So the entities... There in the middle. So they say owns 10% mm-hmm. of South Jamaica Power, 20% of Trans Jamaica Power, and 19% yeah. of JPS. So they would form a, a company, list that company, and then that company that you own would own 10% of South Jamaica Power, which is one of, I don't, I don't know which type of, uh, is that LNG or the, the independent South Jamaica or Power? Yeah, I'm trying to remember which type of... Uh, I don't know what, you know, like there are different yeah. fuels that can burn. I don't remember which one South Jamaica mm-hmm. power is. That's what I'm trying to remember. So I see. But Nigel's gone, bro. Well, I see they, they launched. Uh, so, uh, is, is... <laughs> the work done, done, bro. The work done, done. So see, South Jamaica Power Company, a JPS affiliate company. I'm reading this art. Let me send it to you and you can show it on screen too. They, this is an article from a 20, December 2019. They, 
saying there's an old harbor bay. They were spending 330 mil US. And it was a power center. It uses three dual fuel natural gas fired automotive diesel oil gas turbine generators. And then some steam turbine generators. How much energy is this? Oh, 194 megawatts. So that's just under mm, 200 megawatts. That's wow. huge. Bro. That's huge. So that, so they, I guess they're saying that the government of Jamaica owns, I don't know through what company. Uh, oh, I see in here, it actually says it is a joint venture between Maru Energy, JPS Q1, SRL, EWP Barbados, one Petro Caribe. Oh, it's probably Petro Caribe Development Fund. That's probably the government's day through it then. Cool. Okay, yeah. Maybe. So essentially, that, that stake in Transjam would be mm. sold. That 20% well, stake. Yeah. Hold on. So I just hold on. No, I just no, I just real. It, so it's not that it's being. I don't know. I guess how they would do it. So is it that? So they form a company. They call it. Okay, mm-hmm. it's energy. The three ones we said: JPS Energy, South Jamaica Power Energy, and then so it's like infrastructure. Say so it's Jamaica Infrastructure Company, J I C. This ever ends up being the name? <laughs> I did not know. <laughs> Jamaica Infrastructure Company, and you can then buy into that Jamaica Infrastructure Company. So instead of, and then the Jamaica Infrastructure Company would own, so NRAC would sell its stake to Jamaica Infrastructure Company, and then the Jamaica Infrastructure Company would then be the largest shareholder in Transjam. I guess. Yeah. And then you could then buy shares in the Jamaica Infrastructure Company. So instead of the government owning the shares in the Jamaica Infrastructure Company, the government says, I will sell you maybe, well, I don't know if they do it like Transjam where they sell 80% and then they keep 20% or they just sell all of it. I don't know. Mm, it's possible. Um, I thought they'd sell, I doubt they all, would of sell it, though. all of it too. But... but yeah, that's something I guess to to look forward to. I mean, when I, if you, you can probably pull out the article again, I think he had, I think this was announced January 2024, but then he had said within a year. And I mean, it's, we're recording now, it's November 2024, almost end of November, basically. So, and I don't know, I feel like because he's also left office and then now the new minister, uh, was it Dr. Favor Williams? I'm guessing that there's probably going to be some sort of delay for that. So I don't know how, could have been talking about a JPS listing for a while. Actually, was how do you feel about like it being like those separate companies versus just the one company? Well, they've been talking about JPS, I see Jamaica Mortgage Bank here to uh, also expect it over the next twelve months. They mm-hmm. always throw out these IPOs and never really meet the deadlines. Mm-hmm. So I'm not really looking to see anything. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm not the type to be like, okay, this IPO is coming. This IPO is coming because you never really know if it really is coming or not, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, it could be two, two years, years from now. It could be a decade, or they could just say, mm, change my mind. Mm. You know, yeah, they could just change their mm. mind because unless it's actually on the market or coming to market, we will know. If the prospectus do drop, mm-hmm. you never really know when it's going to come. So, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. but if you, if, what, you, you asked me a specific question about what do I think about what all of them being under one company or so on? Versus like a JPS IPO and then a South Jamaica Power Company IPO and I, then I think I think he's still saying you know, that that will happen. You know, it's just that the stake is not gonna be Enroc. The, the stake is not gonna be these different, you know, government entities. It's just gonna they're just gonna sell them all. Like right? instead of holding up, a... yeah, it's in, in one company. I'm saying versus. Would you have preferred they split it up and it was separate IPOs? I think so it's they still said going to be separate the IPO IPOs for JPS. I think. But didn't he say they're gonna move they're it going into to... one company and then sell the stake in the one company? Oh, as in, or maybe as in, this? as so this is like a government holding company. Because he says the listing is expected to be done via a special infrastructure vehicle 
which is to be created for the purpose of the stock offer of the government assets. Then he says, what we would simply do is move the assets into a vehicle that we own 100%. And then we would list that vehicle, not multiple vehicles, mm -hmm. that single vehicle. And then invite participation in that vehicle from institutions. But it says list some of its shares in these places, you know. So it's really just the, the small percentage of these companies. So yeah, I know. But it will be one IPO. Instead of... Well, that's what I'm understanding yeah, from that this. That's what so I'm saying. Far, I get what you're saying. Let's say they call it JIC and they list JIC, and it's one IPO. That doesn't negate the fact mm -hmm. that JPS could IPO. Because remember, look at, look at how much they have of JPS, 19%. You need to sell 20%. So 20% of JPS needs to be sold in order for it to be on the market. They only own 19. They can't IPO mm -hmm. JPS. Like it, and not even just that. It, remember, it's going to be a holding company, you know. So... They are listing this holding company. This holding company owns, is, think of it like a MJE. They own different assets or different stakes in these other companies. Mm -hmm. That don't mean them can't list mm -hmm. the subsidiaries same way or list the associate stakes or list whatever stakes they have or list those particular companies. So mm -hmm. I don't think it's different. They're just listing a holding company, right? Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. That means you're not getting it for now then. So you're saying eventually they still yeah. could list JPS, but I'm saying like that's not gonna happen right well, now. Well we'll see. They could list JPS and JIC in the same year. <laughs> Why not? Por que no los dos? They could. But um I'm not seeing I I don't necessarily think that would happen. Um and then yeah, I don't if, all it is is more fees to the JSC with all of these transactions. That's how I see it. <laughs> uh, these are huge stakes in giant, huge companies. So, you know, yeah. But um, dialing it back to, sorry, dialing it back to Transjam, though. So I actually looked up the top 10. Since we're just talking about Stella, and see National Road Operating and Construction Company Limited, NRA, they own 20.01%. Uh, you have JMMB in second, right? Kind of shocking, but not really. Yeah. Nice, yeah. Um, Mosan third. Mosan's everywhere. Mosan. And you can see mm -hmm. how much money these things are worth because JMMB's stake is what? 3 billion? Mosan is 2.6 billion. NCB cap. Yeah. Barbados, 2.3. ATL at fifth, mm -hmm. right? SJ, I think this is Scotia. Yeah, Gosha, I think, Sagicora, yeah. Guardian Life, NCB Cap. This is pension. So the pensions mm -hmm. love these kind of stocks, right? This kind of stock that pays, mm -hmm. you know, it was a government company, a government entity, and now they pay like heavy dividends, and it's gonna be around for a long time. And it's like, oh my gosh, it's hard assets. It's like it's mm -hmm. a, it's a road and it's infrastructure and stuff. Yeah, pensions love that kind of stuff. Pensions eat that up, right? And it's not just like they're they're buying at IPO only. They also could be buying on the market. So, and you can see a lot of these um, cap markets and so on increasing their stake. And if we go back a few quarters, you'll see people buying, right? Uh, cap markets at a higher stake and so on. Uh, they, were, they were buying more, sorry, here. So you can literally see it. They were, oh, they were second. Yes. Because I remember JMMB was not second at all. Um. But yeah, you could you could literally see the changes over the it's an underrated feature of My Money J A. Uh, guys use code Limitless in My Money J A if you want to purchase uh, one of these kind of accounts where you get to be able to see a lot of these kind of stuff and have a lot more data about listed companies. Use code Limitless M L I M I T L E S S. That is it. Mm -hmm. So. Going back to Transjam, though, in terms of their plans, right? Uh, so that was the first one. And honestly, I hope they don't charge a lot more money for Mandeville Leg. Like, that's just my only thing. Just because I travel to Mandeville a lot. But I feel like it's going to be a substantial amount. I feel like it's going to... Mm, what? Like what, two no. grand? It's not that, How long it's is not it? It's not much longer. 
Is it? Uh, kind of. No. Grand. I would at least say I'm doing maybe like five bills. Which, which is unfortunate, to be honest. Because... Mm. I guess true. with Mandeville, this will hopefully more people go Mandeville. Well, more people would possibly live in Mandeville because it's easier to go there. So then... Because you said, how, how much faster is it compared to how you used after? It's like mm, half the time? No. If we're using Google Maps and speed limit and so on, it would be one hour, 30 minutes <laughs> from Mandeville to Kingston mm-hmm. in, with the old route. And now it's about an hour with, and a few minutes with the new route. Mm. So it, it cuts out. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Cuts out maybe 33%. Yeah. A third? Let's just say about a third of the time. Mm. It's probably safer. Uh, the roads are better. Versus the roads that the the road, roads are yeah, yeah, safer, like yeah, better for your car. Yeah, then. definitely better. Because through, um, what's that section? St. Tulis going in. Like once, once you pass Porus and St. Tulis and, and get into that area, it's just that those roads are just terrible, man. They're, they were terrible. Uh, so, yeah. Mm. Uh, another thing in terms of their plans that I, I think a lot of people like is, is dividends. Now, if you look in the prospectus, right, you'll see some projections that they have in terms of, you know, the yield projections. So the, for the period 2020 to 2025, there's an average yield of 5.3% to 8.7%, which they were meeting, right? I think one of the years they're up to, they're at least like 6%. Uh, I know you can see the yield on my money, JA. Oh, I should have just clicked company. But um Yeah, so <laughs> I always have this off. But um there's a way to see the yield. You remember how to see the yield? I know the yield is usually somewhere. somewhere. Scroll yeah, down. here we are. This is dollar. Yield four percent, four point four percent. But the thing is, the yield changes. Yeah, this is that that's current, current price. price. The one yeah. they're working on was so the IPO. If you look at this, well, dividend yield is dividend per share. So how much they have per share? Like I think mm-hmm. tran- one of Tranjams. So every share you own in a company, mm-hmm. you get that amount of money before exactly. like taxes and fees well, or you whatever. You divide that by the share price. So if the denominator increases, the yield gets smaller. So if the stock price goes up, the yield gets smaller. So mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. yeah, this is so this is what they projected here. And then for the period of twenty twenty six to twenty thirty six, they're seeing an average yield of twenty four point five percent to thirty five point eight percent. Now this is a massive yield, um, to be honest. Because you're telling me mm-hmm. that if this is per annum all it takes is if it's at the lower end, all it takes is four years for you to bet back your initial investment when you think about it. Because you'll be paid back mm-hmm. let's say twenty five percent per per mm-hmm. year of your initial investment. It just takes four years. And you've made you've made back the money in dividends. So to me that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um if they actually hit this target. And of course you know, the the yield, as I said, will go down once the share price goes up. So they'd have to just be paying more. Mm-hmm. Uh, and another thing is, of course, expansion. I don't think I wrote anything here. But in terms of expansion plans, you know, they're, they're, they were talking about, um, and it's not just, it's the whole government. They've been talking about just connecting the major cities in Jamaica. So expanding it to Westmoreland. Mm-hmm. Right. Imagine the highway is expand. You know, they expand ex- the highway all the way to Westmoreland. Imagine they expand it to so that would give them more opportunity to make more money off of toll. Now, for me, that's I. I don't know, man. Going to different countries and seeing, you know, how much they pay for toll or if they pay toll at all, it it it, it rubs me the wrong way because imagine mm-hmm. you're gonna spend like a bad ten twenty grand just to travel the whole of Jamaica with in toll like if you want to go around you know it it rubs me the wrong way but hey mm-hmm. you know if if you, you 
you can complain and you can profit as as randy says <laughs> or you can complain and profit um and you just own the shares and use the dividends to pay for the toll fees that's one way of investing but uh they've been talking about expanding for sure uh another plan is also the fact that mm. based on the concession agreement they can actually review yearly the toll rates and if they want they can mm -hmm. increase the toll rates by a particular amount based on the concession agreement per year um and it doesn't exceed a certain amount mm. but you know that's increased revenue for them so if you actually look at the financials and i can probably find even like a let's say an, an or you can even look right here at these lines the colored lines are you know this year this one is the previous year so the blue line right here is revenue and you can see there's a decent difference between this year and q1 this year which is 21 uh, million usd versus 17.8 million usd last mm -hmm. year of q1 um and then it changes with quarter you can see a dip in quarter three but usually there's a little dip because this is july to september and so it's le you know, no school mm -hmm. less people travel traversing it and so on so that happens every year you can see the seasonality um and then mm. q4 it, the in, it increases again however however and q4 is usually their best performing year because last year look at look at their q4 20 million us and their highest this year was in q2 which was 19.1 of last year sorry q2 of last year which so i'm expecting q4 to be decent in terms of profit uh if you actually look at the numbers too mm -hmm. i can show you guys the annual reports and we go through like one other reports maybe some financials I can probably just look at even the income statement because the income statement will show you just how they were in terms of um profitability year over year sorry let me just speed this up a bit so this is their oh, this is cash flow statement let me go to the they passed it yes uh revenue yeah. toll rates zooming a bit more you can tell that they've, they've actually increased from 65 uh, million us to 75 million last year all right and of course you have the other gains which are some of the things we spoke about um but look at this look at this wicked difference between 2022 and 2023 40 million operating expenses in 2022 yet it's dropped to 29 million in 2023 and that was attributable to jio that acquisition so them them owning that much more mm. of their operator they pay out less like the payment structure is a bit less um I think they pay mm -hmm. JIO a monthly fee and a, like a percentage of like um, the revenue in terms of the, the, the toll. But I think that, that that's changed a bit um, since that acquisition and so on. So you can see a much more profitable company because they made a loss this year. Granted, 2022 was after COVID. Still during COVID. Still a bit during COVID. This was a 7 million US loss compared to a 23 million just because and they had yeah, to buy a one off expense be, be yes, the net, net, loss. A net loss on acquisition of subsidiary mm. yeah yeah they had to buy a jio mm. i remember when they did that actually and i was just like wow this is buy time <laughs> because if they're buying this if they're buying jio and this looks like a loss a lot of people might be selling but they, they'd be selling for the wrong reason because a lot of people would be looking at it and like Jano, they make a loss, but all you have to do is look at one extra thing right here, and to see, sorry, this line right here, net loss on acquisition of subsidiary, and you realize, oh, that's where the money went. Ah, uh, so yeah, honestly, I do like Transjam as a company for the future. Uh, well, a company now and for the future. Uh. You already know Preston, I'm a shareholder. And this jump is actually 
kind of crazy when you look at it. And so today is what day? Wednesday, November 20th. We're recording this. Um, should have recorded this a few days ago, but you know, schedule. And they were trading at $3 for a while. In fact, I even bought some more at $3.30 or $3. I think I was buying some at $3.40 and I was just like, mm, this is a bit too high. I could have just waited a bit and bought more here. But hey, in the context of everything, it's trading at $4.25 right now. Pretty decent. Can't really complain. Mm -hmm. Um... And I can only personally expect them to go higher because, look, they haven't even started getting paid for mandible leg yet. I still got through that leg free, <laughs> you know? Um, they're still mm. paying really good dividends. All right, last year, and you can mm -hmm. see based on the amount of dividends that they pay. So let me click. There's a way to just see dividends. Sorry, my navigation skills are terrible. So they paid 0 0.095, um, you know, JMD per share here. They paid that same, a very similar amount. When was it? If you go to the side, you can see the same thing too, you know. Yeah. Okay. I can do that too. Dollar. Yeah. Switch it to dollar. So they paid it in yeah, right yeah. here and right here. Right, very similar amounts, and then last year mm -hmm. they only paid one dividend, which was much higher. Basically, the same nine two is eighteen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, if they continue on this trajectory, I mean, it's good dividends. So it's like a nice cash flow stock. Uh, capital gains are there. I don't foresee pensions not buying this and retail not buying this. Um. Worse if they say, hey, you know, let's build a Negro leg or let's build a, a leg to from Williamsfield to, I don't know, where is Central? Santa Cruz in Black River or, or Santa Cruz in St. Elizabeth or something like that. You know, those things kind mm -hmm. of signify, you know, certain alarm bells. But Enrock, I guess Enrock would build it and Enrock mm -hmm. would sell it to them. But from your hair, so Enrock is even considering mm. it. I can tell that the market might start to mm. react to something like that. So, yeah. Mm. Okay. I mean, there there's so many other pluses with Transjam. I remember when they first IPO'd in, during COVID and the stock price fell. I remember this day? It came... And it fell to like this was the average price one dollar eighteen. What's that? I remember Whoa. Shanice got it. Hey, yeah, Shanice we had on the podcast. She, I think, or her first episode with us. I remember when she she said I don't know if it was on that episode, but she said she bought it at one dollar, way lower than one dollar eighteen. This was just the average price. It was close that, and she sold it that same day oh, wow. at like one dollar thirty. It was like a good thirty percent. Mm. Close to thirty percent trade. Where I see that the, the yeah. lowest was a dollar. She was the one that got that. Yo, but imagine if you you held that. Like think of that. Think of that exactly. dividend yield now. Like you could just sit there and yeah, wow. Because it's it's almost they're paying close to twenty cents mm -hmm. now. So imagine that's a twenty percent dividend yield on that dollar price. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is how the the, oh, the, oh, oh. the the stock the I guess it looks. Let me see if I can extend it. I want financial periods off too, and just let's just see how the raw graph looks from here. Look at this stock. Yeah, parabolic right now. So I mean, yeah, that's that's really a trans jam. What do you what do you think? Can you add any more like comments or look at the PE eleven, even at this price? Mm. Even at four dollar twenty five. No, not no, yeah. really. I mean, directors are buying too. I remember seeing a lot of directors buying, which is always a great sign for us, at least. Um, but at this, yeah, inside the trading just started to sell. 
click on oh. no, it's in Jiro. your sortative view. Sold, sold, sold. Yeah. But a director purchased this many, 116 million. So that that makes these look like nothing. See, so yeah, our article saying it was Patrick mm. Hilton. I don't Patrick know if that's true. Patrick Hilton is a director, yes. I remember seeing him in. Mm-hmm. I think he sold, and I think he sold NCB recently. So maybe he sold some NCB and then used some of that money mm-hmm. to buy Trans Jam. Would make sense. <laughs> and he's already up like yeah. almost thirty percent. Yeah, <laughs> that's still crazy. Thirty <laughs> percent on this many shares. Imagine this: one hundred and sixteen million shares. I think he bought. He bought before the dividend, right? Yeah, the six, the seventeen. 17th to the 20th and the dividend mm. the dividend date was which date uh, yeah they declared this on the 11th mm. which day would you have had to be a be click it click yeah. it click the notice it should be on twenty four October twenty four, yeah. Ex dividend date is October two. So definitely. Definitely, definitely. Can you imagine his dividend? Mm. You could literally calculate his dividend, you know. Just off of these shares that he just bought. Because imagine you buy you don't even need to know stock price or anything for those kind of stuff. You buy um a hundred let's say it's 116 million right million shares mm-hmm. shares shares and it's at what 0.094 oh nine see there 0.0952 mm-hmm. um it's at 0.0952 and then of course you have to consider like dividend tax so that's 15 percent. so we multiply it by let's say 0.85 his dividend was 9.3 mm-hmm. million jmd 9.4 million jmd off of just these shares alone that he bought because i believe mm-hmm. he owns even more shares um because he can go into let's check his shareholdings I scared. Oh, we should mention too. They also have preference shares um, at eight percent, and they have a USD listing too. Board members: Patrick Hilton. Oh, is he a new shareholder? Interesting. Mm. Okay. okay. Well, congrats, Sir Hilton. You know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Um, Ivan Anderson. And he's a CEO. He he owns five point four million shares. I like to see people in the company that own shares. But yeah, Transjam. I mean, kind of. You know, I like the stock in terms of how simple it is for people to understand it. Um. Yeah, it's just a it's a simple mm-hmm. company to understand. Uh, it's a great business model, cash business. So they will pay dividends. Usually, I see a lot of cash businesses paying dividends, and you know, it's a, it's a staple. So they already, if the highway is already built, they don't really. I mean, they have to maintain it, but they just pay that maintenance fee, and then the rest yeah. of the money they can just pay out. So yeah, one mm. to watch, right? Anyways, guys, if you like this episode. Drop that subscribe click, please. Would do us a massive favor. We'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much for listening today. And yeah, if you guys like the stock or so on, you know, tell us. Tell us why you like the stock in the comments. What the stock has done for you, your mother, your granny, everybody. (laughs) You know, uh, we would love to hear it. Thank you so much again, guys. Limitless out.